All right, Gilbert won last week, so uh, you get to choose whether you want to go first or you want to let Fernando go first. Punt. I'll go. I'll go. I always go first. I'll take the ball. All right, here we go. So let's start off with uh, let's start off with some NFL talk here, and we'll start here off with goes. Jerry. Here with... goes Matt Hasselbeck. Yeah, I want the ball, and we're going to score. <laughs> Pick six, Tremont Williams. Yeah, hey, I've, I've won the last two weeks, so I'll keep it going. There we go. Uh, all right. Let's start off with Jerry Jones. He said uh, the Cowboys were all in before the start of free agency. They've only signed one player, you know, who wasn't re-signed. The other four were re-signed by the Cowboys. Uh, and they have three three players eligible for extension, Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb, and Micah Parsons. How would you guys rank the priority of getting extensions on, on the three players? You know what? I – and. In most situations, I would have gone with the edge rusher, especially one as dominant as Michael Parsons. But Fernando, I might steal your answer, and I'm going to give you credit right here. You reminded me not too long ago that Michael Parsons sometimes falls asleep when the game's on the line. When it's a clutch moment, you got to step up like a TJ Watt or Aaron Donald. He hasn't had those moments. You know, a couple of times, maybe a strip sack here and there. I got to see a little more from Micah. Obviously, you got to prioritize edge rusher. To me, it's CD Lamb, man. Who's the biggest playmaker on that team? Who's stepping up in, in the crutch, clutch moment? Remember that game against the Detroit Lions? He went 80 yards for a touchdown. CD Lamb is that guy. Like, it's starting to get to a point where CD might be as good as Jefferson. I kind of feel a little hesitant to say that because Jefferson, you know, has been a dominant wide receiver, but he got hurt last year. And the year before, that was okay. Or well, the year before, that was actually the, the, the dominant one where he got the triple crown. Last year, he got hurt. But CD has been on that pace the last two years. Maybe he didn't get the triple crown. But last year, he might have been the best wide receiver. Sorry. Give me C.D. Lamb uh, as a priority right now. Pay the guy. He's going into his he's, – he got drafted in 2020 with Justin Herbert. Pay the man already. Same thing with Justin Jefferson. No, no, no. But what's your order, though? Oh, give me the order? Yeah, for sure. Michael Parsons, number two. Dak Prescott, I'm sorry. I'm glad we, you gave me the order. Thank you for the reminder. We've seen enough of you, Dak. You're decent, good enough to get to the playoffs. But you always, always – I should be easy with this. Should uh, be take a dump on the bed but uh yeah as I, and up to the, and i get i salute the jones family for eating that money and taking the big cap hit because it wasn't easy to do but the guy hasn't shown you anything in the playoffs sometimes you got to put pressure on your qb in the year it seems like this is a year but if they pay the guy in july in training camp i'm gonna be shaking my head come on cowboys vic i'm gonna win this with four words gilbert you missed your opportunity you could have said amber heard the bed <laughs> I forgot about that, but yeah, okay, go ahead. <laughs> no, uh, that's on your that's on your mind for some reason. Well, no, because I said shit the bed, and then I was like, oh, you know what? Oh, <laughs> yeah. this would have been way better. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> I I can't help but not think about either three of these players and say I would sign them to an extension. I, I well, okay, let me rephrase that. I think the problem here is Mike McCarthy and Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones needs to look in the mirror and say, hey, I'm 80-something years old. I ain't got a lot of time. I got to change this up. He needs to change up his approach. I know we're at the point where he's probably never going to do that, but still, it is embarrassing the fact that you're still living off of three Super Bowls that Jimmy Johnson won you when Jimmy Johnson was in control of those teams. So I think he needs to go back to that formula, but I'm just going to go with saying Mike McCarthy is the, is the biggest problem of why this team won't succeed. Last year, you blame Kellen Moore. You have no contract. And this year, who the hell are you going to blame? It all falls on you once this deteriorates. Not if. Once it deteriorates, this is all going to fall on you. Last year, I didn't think the Cowboys were a good team. I told all you during the whole season, the Cowboys are not a good team. Gilbert would put him in his top five. Vic would put him in his top five. Dan would put him in his top No, I'm kidding. I don't know if you guys all did or not. I'm just talking crap. I but uh, I just didn't believe in them because I know what happens. The Cowboys are always going to pull that crap where at the end of the season they falter and then they go into the playoffs and they, they crap themselves. Gilbert, I remember you were surprised when I told you the Packers are going to win this game because I just have no faith in, in Mike McCarthy as a coach. I don't think he's a good coach. I don't think he knows what he's doing. I don't think he's um, transitioned to this well, new era. You did pick so, up, Fernando, but can we get your order already? Jesus. No, yeah, yeah, like, I'll pick up. Like, well, hold crap on. The, Cowboys, huh? uh, the way I'm going to prioritize this is I actually agree with your order. I'll go CD Lamb is the priority just because I was very impressed that even though the Cowboys just completely crapped themselves in that playoff game, CD Lamb was still very efficient. Uh, Micah Parsons, there are some questions I have, not just about his game, but – everything else i 
I'm not a fan of the whole podcasting and all this stuff, and I'm just not a big fan of it. And Dak, we already know what he is. Uh, he, I, if I, if they really do re-sign him, then they are they deserve everything that they get because Dak may be a great guy. He may be a family man. He may be this. He may be a Cam the Campbell's chicken noodle soup guy. He's not a guy that's going to win you a Super Bowl. So, and I mean, that's okay, I guess. If 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 what you want to continue doing is what you're doing, then keep on doing it. But if you want to make changes, it starts with the owner, starts then the head coach, and then it starts with the quarterback. That's my order right there. But, yeah, I'll go with your same order, basically. Uh, I'll give the point here to Gilbert, but, Fernando, that was awesome. Honestly, like, you going on a rant about the Cowboys, uh, I, you know, I wish I, but you didn't answer the question. And I'll say this, just to kind of, you know, make a bigger point here. I'm surprised, you know, to your point about Jerry Jones, I'm surprised why have, why are you waiting, why did you wait this long? Now the contracts are going to be astronomical that you're going to have to pay cd lamb and micah parsons and so it, it's just it just looks really bad all right uh we're moving on now uh with gilbert up one nothing here and this question is i made this one specifically for fernando here tom brady whoa whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. gilbert hadn't answered the question until i gave him the assist yes. i was what quicker you... to it though <laughs> shut the hell up you were about yeah. to just we had already switched the boxes <laughs> and i was gonna go all right no i'm kidding i'm just i'm just giving crap that's for a saying you put him in the top five you, you threw in victor and you're around that's why yeah that's true yeah you you did throw the the guy uh who thank is, you jorge is this is rigged <laughs> all right next one tom brady was on the deep cut podcast and said josh allen will be the next quarterback to win uh, the first Super Bowl, uh, to win his first Super Bowl. Do you guys agree with him? Or who would you guys think would be, or who do you guys think will be the next quarterback to win their first Super Bowl? Think think uh, wisely, because Dan and David might jump on soon, Fernando. <laughs> He's going to get annoyed. And I, and I really want to pick who I'm thinking of right now, just because of who the head coach is. Mm. But I really think that this year is the all in year for the for the Cincinnati Bengals. I really think that this is their all in year. You're about to lose T Higgins. You still haven't paid Jamar Chase. Uh I always want to call him Taj Boyd. That's not his name. Tyler yeah. Boyd is no longer there. Um but I I think the Bengals, I think this is their window. They have a lot of contracts out for big time players. Joe Burrow's contract is about to take over. I, I think it's Joe Burrow that has to win. Well, it's not who has to win it, I guess. But I'll, I'll go Joe Burrow. I think he wins his first uh, Super Bowl. Um, he's the next young quarterback to win his first Super Bowl. Uh, and like it or not, I know that the the Chiefs players talk a lot of crap about it. The Bengals do kind of have a score to settle with the Chiefs. So I'll, I'll say Joe Burrow. Uh, if you've got a good answer, Fernando, I won't go there because I'll say I think the T. Higgins dilemma is going to linger like a bad cloud. Like he might be on the way out. They won't pay the guy. He kind of got forced to go get Romeo around. Duse, jump up and go get Romeo yeah. Odunze. If they think ahead and they're smart like the Eagles usually do when it comes to a situation like that, then maybe you're going to be right for sure, like I feel Fernando. like. Uh, or Fernando, or, you know. But, uh, you know, and just to say, just to kind of add to it, Dan, Dan, I don't know if you're watching or maybe you're behind you're behind Mo's tavern you right now. If you say Tua Tungavailoa, I think that, no, no, that, no, 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 that no, no, glass no, no, is going to break. I'm just going to say, I can't say Justin Herbert because I think the Chargers are in rebuild mode. I like Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. It might take That's a couple of years. I, yeah. not, I can't do it. But you know what? I'll This one just – there goes the cat. This one just – just is, I don't think they're super contenders just yet, but I like the guy so CJ much. Stroud. and they, Yeah, CJ, CJ Stroud. Stroud. They helped them out with Stephon Diggs. You know, they helped them out with Joe Mixon. They got Daniel Hunter. So, the, you know, that, that could be the problem. You know, I, I get There's three problem. No, Daniel but, Hunter's not problematic, right? It's just the other two. No, no, no. He's just a little older. Who's the one that jumped him. out of the ambulance? No, no. That was what? another pass rusher from the Vikings. <laughs> there was a pass rusher from the Vikings that had jumped out of an uh, ambulance, and he was all. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Show. Everson Griffin. Yeah, 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 there you go. Okay, here, that's here. the guy. Okay, yeah, yeah. my bad. Okay, he go. retired. <laughs> but they, they, they're just okay. If I'm going off of odds and you tell me a quarterback has never won it, and this is why I'll was, I was say it, Fernando, because they, they kind of remind me of the Bengals in 2021, Joe Burrow's second year. They kind of need a year to kind of figure it out. And then they went, they went to the Super Bowl. They don't win it. I'm saying CJ Stroud could be in a good position. 
position. I don't know if they can beat the Chiefs just yet, but I like them and being in the playoffs. I like them winning the division. I, I don't really care for the Jaguars, and I get it's that time of year we got to pick different teams. Jaguars don't do it for me. Titans don't do it for me. And the Colts, yeah, they could hang around, but I'm going to go with CJ Stroud right now. Uh, and one more uh, addition for the takeaways here. I think Josh Allen's going to have a better year. I get that Stephon Diggs left them, but maybe having a different offense could help them. I just don't see them going all the way. Something about Josh Allen and Dak Prescott just doesn't seem like a team that might go all the way. Yeah, I'm giving this point to Fernando. I mean, we've we've heard Joe Burrow say. I think the the biggest thing with Joe Burrow though is he needs to stay healthy for a full season. If he does, I think they have the number of the Chiefs. Like they've been the ones who've been able to figure things out. They still have that defensive coordinator Lou uh, Adarumo. So I I'm I'm with Fernando here. Tied up one one guys as we head up to the third the third question here. The, the prospects attending the NFL draft have been declining for the past five years. What is the biggest recent players such as J.J. McCarthy, Brock Bowers, and Joel Alt are declining invitations? Is it not wanting to have the cameras on you if you drop in the draft like we saw with Will Levis last year? Or is it not wanting to go to a city like Detroit? Let me just give you guys just some numbers here. Uh, last year in KC, there was only 17 attendees. Uh, the year before that in Cleveland, there was 13 and then, um, and then uh, in 2022, it was uh, sorry. In 2022, is Vegas. They had 23. 2021 in Cleveland, they had 13. And then in 2019, in Nashville, they had 2023. So, is it the city, or is it the players not wanting to be on camera in case they fall to the second round? You know, if if you would have kind of gave me some different names, you know, I, I think Joe Alt would be a for sure top 15. Obviously, McCarthy's going because he's a quarterback might be top 15. Uh, Brock Barris, I'm unsure if I've heard top five or top 25. Who the hell knows? But I think I'm going to go off of just being less stressful. You know, just kind of why are you going to be in front of the camera? Some people just like being around family and having a good time. Like, why put yourself out there where you're going to be in the shot, you know, the, for the last two hours of the draft because you're not in the top 20 or top 15. You're like, do I, really, do I want to go the Aaron Rodgers route? Do I really want to do that? Or Lamar Jackson being sat next to his mom? Like, it's just the cameras never did the players justice. I could see that. It's just maybe like a, like a chiller vibe, less stressful. I think that's pretty much it. I don't think players are saying I won't be top 20 or top 15. Well, you you also can't <clears throat> bring all your family. And I think some of these guys just want to be around their families, teammates, all that stuff. I think it's a lot. I really think that COVID kind of changed everything when it came to the draft. And I feel like people are kind of like, eh, like why? why I can do it from home. They can just bring the cameras. By the way, the best one still is CD Lamb. When he's on his phone, his girl tries to take his phone and then uh, right. he grabs it and he's like, nah. That could be the idea. downside of being at home, by the way. Well, yeah, but uh, I mean, he's probably not with her anymore. But uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, um, sure. But I, I really, I really think that that's the issue that everybody wants to be surrounded by family and friends. And they're kind of like, you have to go there. You have to get dressed up. You have to answer media questions. You have to do all this. And then you, the behind the scenes, like you have to, you have to talk to the, to the media that's there. Then you have to talk to the media. That's the local media. And then you have to do all this crap. And then after that, you have to fly to whatever city you're, uh, you are, um, whatever uh, city drafted you. So it's like, why not just go from home? You talk to the local media and then you get to leave and, and go to the, to, um, the city that drafted you. So, I, and then, like Gilbert said, also, the J.J. McCarthy stuff, I mean, you just never know. Like, some of these guys are really big outliers. You just don't know where you're going to go. So uh, I completely see why some of these guys just don't want to do it. And then who wants to do that long walk? I mean, why do you want to do that long walk? And then who wants to high-five the commissioner? Like, in a couple of months, he's going to be fining your ass. So why why go up to him? <laughs> so, <laughs> But, yeah, that's, that's the thing that I think. I think people are kind of like, I'd rather be at home with my family and with my people and having a huge celebration um, instead of just being there at the draft with only my mom, my dad, brother, sister, girlfriend, whatever. Um, but yeah. Don't yeah, you. no, I, I'm with, I'm with you, Fernando. I think that's part of it. I think the city too. I mean, if you look at the lowest ones in the last five years, they're Detroit. I mean, it's, you know, Detroit and Cleveland who wants to go. I mean, there's a reason why Nashville and Vegas have had the most is because people want to go to those kind of, uh, Did they already do it in Kansas city or is that next year? No, they did it already. They only had okay. 17 there oh, yeah. as well. That was so, last yeah. year, right? Yeah, it was last year. Yeah. That was last year. So yeah. I mean, and yeah. Then, who the hell? I mean, uh, and I know Dan and Dago has beef with uh, the Detroit Lions fans, but why? 
Why yeah, would you and then next year is in Green like? Bay. So, I mean, oh, who's going to oh, want to go to Green Bay? That one for sure will be a city thing, I think. That one for sure. Yeah. All right. So up yeah. to one here. Uh, today is Jackie Robinson Day across MLB, and every player wears number 42 to honor him. Is there an NFL player that should have his number retire across the league for their contributions on and off the field? Oh, shoot. It's me. You're first. Yeah. Uh, I thought of one because I saw this question. It's going to stump me. Okay, I'm gonna use yours. Um, no, I'm, I'm not you. I'm not that you. That is the benefit of going first. Uh, no, I, I I don't think so. I, I I just and I know that there's been a lot of uh oh, uh a certain somebody said uh oh you know what? Thank you, thank you, certain someone. Uh, Pat Tillman. I would love to see uh Pat Tillman get honored for uh for his uh for obviously him making the ultimate sacrifice and, and obviously he passed away while making that ultimate sacrifice. So I completely, I, I would be all for if they wanted to honor Pat Tillman that way, I think it'd be a, a great thing to see because of obviously we all know, um, we all know what he, uh, um, what he brought in and all of his contribution. That's actually a pretty good one. And I'm for that too, but uh, I think it should be Jim Brown. You know, there's could be a couple of names on here. I don't know why we don't really do that for the NFL. But uh, Jim Brown, number 32, with, with the Browns, obviously legendary for what he did on the field, off the field, things like that. So uh, why not, you know, the legend right there, Jim Brown, who brought a lot of championships for the city, but not, unfortunately, not Super Bowl because he didn't play during the era of Super Bowls. Yeah, both great answers, honestly. I mean, you can't go wrong with, uh, I think it was 42 that uh, that uh, he wore. Was it, what's his? Uh, 32. No, I, no, 32. Jim Brown, but I'm talking oh. about uh, uh yeah, Pat yeah. Tillman. Yeah, 42. yeah, I think you're right. 42. Or is it 44? Yeah. 42, okay. 42. Yeah, okay. so, but I'll give you the point there, Gilbert, because I, I just, I mean, Jim Brown, what he did in the 60s and then putting the NFL on the map, I mean, I, I, I'm with you. I'm surprised they haven't retired his number across the league, but, um, and then what he did off the field too, just like Pat Tillman. That's why both of them are great answers. All right, guys, uh, uh, tied up 2-2. We're going to do some combat sports here uh, who, you know, and, and, you know, we'll see if uh, Dan and Dago is ready to go. So uh, I want to get through this. Here. I think he's ready. He looks bored. Oh, he, he is ready. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Who bored. is the best? Okay. So because we, you know, we started this with UFC 300, uh, who is the best pound for pound fighter right now? Is it Islam, Leon Edwards, Alex Pereira, or Leah Tupuria? Mm. My turn. Yeah. Okay, and we already kind of gave it away, but that's actually a, a good amount of lists there. Islam's pretty good. To, I like to pour you a lot now. Uh, Leon Edwards actually has, has had a nice second half to his career. He came out of nowhere. But uh, Alex Pereira, man, he's, he's on a different level. I get that Asanya beat him one time, but they fought like eight times. Like, he's going to get him eventually. So he's a freak of nature. He's a monster. He, he gets a, When he gets annoyed, he knows how to fight better. Yeah, the whole going bald thing is a pretty cool gimmick. Hands of stones, Botan, Chama. So I like uh, Alex Pereira. Alex, I gotta say his first name right. Alex, you uh, you obviously took mine because yeah, sorry, sorry, I, I didn't write it in. Um, I think I'm gonna <laughs> go with Leon Edwards. I mean, obviously he beat uh, he beat Nate Diaz, he beat uh, Usman twice, and then he beat Colby Covington. Uh, I think he's he's done a, a a really good job of like you said, Gilbert, his second win, his second uh, the second part of his career. Um, I think he's done a, a great job, and I feel like Leon Edwards, especially with those three names there. I mean, what what else do you want? So I'm gonna go uh, Leon Edwards. Yeah, I'm actually going with Fernando here because he's right. I mean, if you look at the, I I think with Pereira, he's on a hotter streak right now. But in terms of like overall, what he's been doing for the past couple of years, I'm gonna give Leon. Uh, Edwards, I I would have Islam one, Leon Edwards, and then Alex, and then and Leah per, Tupura, kind of like what I said. But uh, because you guys with the two names that you guys went with, with I I like Leon Edwards just because he's done a little bit more, and then the people he's fought and beaten. I mean, remember Usman was he's, he was a boring fighter, and he you know we we got two really good matchups out of it. Yeah. So I want to see, I kind of want to see what happens with the rest of this list. I want to see, you know, we've only seen Islam, you know, he he went he went he had a. Uh, Bokanaski go up and wait to fight him. I want to see him kind of move around, and I really like what Alex Pereira is doing right now. So, but in terms of what we've seen, I think Leon Edwards, you know, is is ahead of Alex or as of right now. 
Jorge, did you see that comeback kid come back and won this after Gilbert took the first point? So there you go. I, I did want to do one more thing, but because uh, uh, a bigger star is waiting, I'll hold off on it <laughs> and we can do it another time. It's well, a good one, though. Let, no, I want it's to a think good about one, it. but like that that happens not next week, but the week out during the end the weekend of the NFL. That's why I wanted yeah, to get so, it in before. Yeah, that'll be a good one. Yeah, I wanted to do it before the draft, but I'll, I'll save it for next week. We'll That'd have a fun, we'll yeah. have. Let's uh, make it a. If you want make it a make it a segment if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. Uh, yeah, let's do that next week then. Um, but uh, Fernando, congratulations! Uh, you end uh, Gilbert's streak of two in a row, and uh, now now it's your turn. Um, but uh, congratulations! There you go. Thank you, Vic. Thank you for that. Rapid fire is always fun uh, to add and mix. Yeah. A little bit of something, something, but uh, good question. I'm gonna be in trouble. Like 